Saudi Arabia, The Rage on the Red Sea. A historic World Heavyweight Boxing Championship between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua taking place on the 20th of August here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to welcome on stage four of our special guests today. Please welcome Prince Fahad bin Abdul Aziz, official spokesperson of Skill Challenge Entertainment. Mr. Abdullah Al Harbi, President of Saudi Boxing Federation. Mrs. Rasha Al Khamis, Vice President of Saudi Boxing Federation. And Mr. Eddie Hearn, Chairman of Matchroom Sport. Before us, we have those responsible for growing the sport of boxing in Saudi Arabia and underpin everything the kingdom is working towards as part of Vision 2030. Since the hosting of Clash of the Dunes in 2019, the Boxing Federation has been on an incredible journey of progress. To explain more, I'd like to start my questions with the Federation President, Mr. Abdullah Al Harbi, if he may allow. Mr. Abdullah Al Harbi, could you please describe for us what boxing is like today in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and what progress you've made in the past recent years, please? Sure. I mean, let me first of all welcome Eddie back to Saudi Arabia. It's great to have you here. And as well, welcome the boxers, both uh, Alexander and AJ. And I'm looking forward, actually, for a great fight. Since, as you rightfully said, Clash of the Dunes was 2.5 years ago. And thank God, from that time, we managed to see a massive growth in terms of the participation of people inside the sport. We had back then 300 people that were, or 300 boxers that were registered in the federation. Today we managed to reach to 1,200 people in, in the federation. And because of the clash of the dunes and all of the different might that it brought to, to, the, to the game. A uh, number of participation in terms of uh, different clubs. We used to only have four national clubs that were participating in boxing. Around five different uh, gyms. And, uh, that were part of the federation. Today, we are on 32 different clubs and around 70 different gyms that are participating. So it was a great success in terms of building the participation in the sport. Amazing, so we do have a lot of uh, future ambition for the sport. Um, how big can the sport get in Saudi Arabia and in the region? Sorry? How big can the sport get, the sport of boxing? Well, we recently launched our strategy that focuses on three main pillars. Number one is mass participation in the sport itself. You know, boxing is not only combat boxing, but it includes as well athletic boxing, it includes boxing for fitness, and we want to increase that number from today being 18,000, give and take estimation, up to around 500,000 people that are going to be within the mass participation in boxing. As well, we want to grow the sport when it comes to the grassroots programs and the different uh, elements of the human capital of the sport. So we're focusing on training the trainers, focusing mainly on as well, including the coaches, include, uh, including the referees and the judges for the, for the game, and growing different programs within the, the schools and universities to grow the sport. Last but not least, the third is actually focusing mainly on what we call boxing under Vision 2030, which this main event is part of, and the Clash of the Dunes was part of, where we want to bring to the kingdom those major events when it comes to boxing, because it helps, number one, promote the kingdom as a hub for multiple sports, and as well includes and increases the number of participation and people that are interested in joining the sport. Amazing, Mr. Abdullah Al Harbi, Saudi Boxing Federation President, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Moving on to our Vice President of the Saudi Boxing Federation, Mrs. Rasha Al Khamis. Welcome. And uh, you are uh, now a living embodiment of the growing popularity of boxing in the kingdom. You are a boxer yourself, right? Sure. Right? Uh, tell us more about your journey. Sure. Um, let me start by shedding light on my upbringing. Um, I grew up with uh, a principle and values that sports is for all. Sports is for girls and boys, for men and uh, women. Um, this, uh, this principle and value has been instilled in me since I was seven years old. Um, growing up playing basketball versus my brother Abdullah, um, um, and my dad used to coach us. So, um, and I remember that the same critiques he used to give my brother, he used to give it to me, and that showed me that sports is for all. Um, 
growing up and being a sports enthusiast, uh, I've done six sports growing up. I've done, uh, uh, I've done basketball, soccer, tennis, surfing, long distance running, and um, cycling. Um, ending it with boxing. Uh, I picked up boxing in 2014 uh, when, I, um, when I traveled to pursue my graduate studies. And I recall, that, um, uh, I recall that I've actually done boxing because it was such a sort of an outlet from all the pressures that I was going through when I was, going, when I was um, pursuing my graduate studies, living abroad. And that was such an, an outlet to something that really um, inspired me. And it was a tool that really inspired me. So going back in 2017, uh, coming back to Saudi Arabia, I had a conversation with the, with, the, with the previous president of the Saudi Arabia Boxing Federation. And um, I recall that um, I've shared with him my experience with boxing and how it positively impacted my life. And um, I recall that he mentioned that with the, vision of, uh, with the vision of 2030, Saudi Arabia's vision 2030, um, and the direction of Ministry of Sports and Saudi Arabia Olympic Committee, under the leadership of um, His Royal Highness Al Amir Abdul Aziz bin Turki and uh, Al Amir Fahad bin Jlouwi, um, that they're actually activating not only Boxing Federation, but all other federations, the 92 federations. And that was a pivotal point for me from being the athlete to a coach. And I got certified as the boxing coach. Amazing. What a journey, uh, Ms. Rasha. We see an increase of 150% uh, of women participation in boxing. True. Specifically, uh, you as a woman who is now helping to drive boxing's growth in the country, uh, what impact do you think the rage on the Red Sea will have on the grassroots? Um, that's a very good question. So reverting back and having a, a real living example, which is the clash of the dunes, uh, boxing has really impacted the ecosystem. And if you look at number of boxers, it grow by uh, it, uh, it grow by 300%. If you look at fitness boxing, it actually grow by 18,000. And if you look at the number of clubs, it grow by 50%. That tells you that the impact is tangible and the ecosystem is shaping up. Um, and I believe with the, with the transformation of the federation and giving the fact that uh, of the huge demand that is taking place in Saudi Arabia and when it comes to boxing, we have a very uh, strong federation, a transformed tra uh, federation, to supply the demand. And yeah, amazing. Uh, Rasha Al Khamis, Vice President of the Saudi Boxing Federation, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. We now turn to Prince Fahad bin Abdul Aziz, official spokesperson of Skill Challenge Entertainment. The first question that pops into my mind: Tell us about your ambition to stage such a historic sporting event. Uh, like uh, rage on the Red Sea? Well, actually, first, by the support from King Salman and his, his Crown Prince, which is Mohammed bin Salman, under Vision 2030, and by the support also by Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki al Faisal, we want to bring home the best and the biggest world class events here in Saudi for our people. And that's why. <laughs> so that's why. We, you know, our people, we, we always work with the best so we can bring the best here. Exactly. That's so the, our country is transforming yeah. today. Sports is playing a key role in this transformation, yeah. and such events do that as well. Yeah, sure. These, uh, the, I mean, our country is in transformation now. So, as you said, so our country is growing both economically and socially. So that's why we need to bring the, the best and the biggest uh, events here in Saudi. Amazing. And we hope that uh, this is going to be big, this is going to be exciting to work with these guys. And also, this is a dream from, for, for my brother Khaled to bring boxing here in the kingdom. So I'm, I'm saying hi to him, so this is your dream came true. <laughs> and one of many to come, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah, this is the first thing, inshallah. Many, many more to come. Inshallah. Uh, what impact uh, are you hoping that these events have on Saudi Arabia? Maybe you have touched base on that, but uh, these events are part of our country's vision 2030 transformation, yeah. inspiring our people to be inspired by sport. Yeah, um, many people, as Abdullah said, many people are, are inspired here. And actually, I'm amazed by the numbers that yani, men and women are inspired by the boxing. 
So I hope this makes more men and women get involved in boxing and generally sports, yeah, in general. We have many like Russia today involved yeah. in, uh, in boxing. Yeah, she's a big idol, yeah. Right. So that's Amazing. Good. Uh, Prince Fatin Abdul Aziz, uh, Skill uh, Challenge Thank Entertainment. Thank, Thank you so you. much. The guy that knows the best. <laughs> Eddie, uh, finally coming to you, uh, I want to ask you, we've seen how boxing can be uh, uh, very effective and can change lives and communities. What's, uh, what has impressed you since you came to Saudi Arabia in, back in 2019 until today? Well, firstly, it's, it's great to be back and see so many friends and familiar faces. I mean, 2019 seems like an eternity ago and, and um, you're quite right to mention Prince Khalid, of course, a very dear friend of ours who had a vision for boxing. And it was that vision that really enticed us to be here the first time around for Anthony Joshua against Andy Ruiz, the clash on the dunes. And I think it's amazing to see the growth of boxing here in the kingdom, especially bearing in mind COVID and, and the effect that pandem the, the pandemic had on all sports, because I think the growth would have been significantly higher. So it's stopped us in the tracks a little bit, but to come back here now with a bigger fight, of course, the Unified World Heavyweight Championship, the Rage on the Red Sea, I think this is very important to inspire the next generation of boxing. I think everybody's touched on the benefits and the effects that boxing can have for the younger generation, and all sport can have for the younger generation in terms of discipline and respect and manners and understanding about life, winning, losing, you know, being part of a team, you know, playing as an individual, everything that sport can deliver for you. So for us, it's amazing to bring major sporting events to the kingdom, but it's also important that there's an investment and a belief within the sports at grassroots level. And that came from Khalid, and that was a big focus of, of his when we started this journey. And, you know, whilst we want to bring the biggest fights to the kingdom, we also want to witness that growth, and we're seeing that through the numbers, and that's very pleasing. Amazing. Uh, when you hear the ambition of the country that has to uh, that uh, Mr. Abdullah Harbi mentioned, we want to get half a million people into boxing today. Tell us about how proud you are to partner with the kingdom for these uh, events. Well, very proud because, as I said, you know, it, it's important to inspire the next generation. They need role models, they need heroes, they need to see the best of the best. So, you know, for that younger generation to see great fighters like Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua, and there is no greater prize in the sport of boxing than the World Heavyweight Championship it doesn't get any bigger. So, you know, for, for young people within the kingdom, they should be looking at these great fighters, these great athletes, and being inspired to start boxing. And, and starting boxing and walking through the doors of a boxing club is not just about wanting to be a professional boxer. It's about getting fit, getting healthy, you know, being strong in the mind, being part of a team, being part of a community. And like I said, boxing for me can be the greatest strength of a community to bring people together. So. It's really important to see that growth. One day, we hope we're sitting here at a press conference for a Saudi world champion, yeah, you know, looking right. to, to defend his titles. And if the growth continues, that will happen. But so good to see people out participating in sport, yeah. participating in the sport that we love, Amazing. which is boxing. And we have a, a you know, our plans at Matrim is, is involves huge global growth and being part of the growth here in Saudi Arabia is very humbling. Thank you so much, Eddie Hearn, ladies and gentlemen, Match Room Sports. Thank you to our panelists. It's almost time to meet the boxers. I now invite to the stage Alex Krasiok of K2 Management, Egis Klimas, manager of Alexander Usyk, Robert Garcia, trainer of Anthony Joshua. On stage, please. On stage, please. And this one. No, it's all right. Good How is it going? I'm good. You're all uh, warmly welcomed uh, to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Mr. Abdullah Al Harbi. This uh, has been one of the biggest moments in Saudi sports history and follows a growing list of international events that Jeddah has hosted. What does this mean to the kingdom to have another world heavyweight championship fight? And why were you so keen on securing this particular fight? Under Vision 2030, um, today we see a lot of growth when it comes to the sports industry. 
uh, with the patronage of His Royal Highness Crown Prince and his focus mainly on the youth of Saudi Arabia being almost the majority of the people in Saudi Arabia, 60% are the youth, there is a massive focus going to be on, on sports. And with the leadership of the sports being uh, spearheaded by Prince Abdul Aziz bin Turkey, it's great to see these multiple events on different sports where it increases the mass participation for a lot of people within, within the economy. So having another sport, another event within boxing is going to just increase the numbers. And we're looking forward actually for a lot of people to get inspired by these two gentlemen here. And hopefully, as Eddie highlighted before, having a champion within Saudi that is going to be spearheading Saudi Arabia in the, in the future in the pro boxing division. Amazing. Thank you so much. And after the increase of 300% in boxing participation after the crash of the dunes back in 2019, uh, going from a few gyms to multiple gyms today, what are your plans to get 500,000 people into boxing in the next four years across the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Can you tell us briefly about that? And that is the, going to be the focus for us, which is ensuring that with this number of multiple events that are going to be hosted within the kingdom, that it inspires a lot of people to start building their attribution within the sport of boxing, either be it on fitness boxing, either be it on participating in bouts. So we look forward actually for hosting multiple events, starting with the biggest event that we can actually have with the, with the help of match room and, uh, and skill challenge. And hopefully that's not going to be only the, it's only going to be the beginning where we're going to have a lot of other bouts in the future. Amazing, hopefully. And I would like to uh, talk to the man who knows the boxers best today, a man who helped bring this fight, World Heavyweight Championship fight to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and has now returned, Mr. Eddie Hearn, Chairman of uh, Match Room Boxing, as we introduced you before, back to the Kingdom at this time to Jeddah. How does it feel? Feels good, right? Feels fantastic and uh, a welcome, of course, to everyone here. We want to thank, of course, Skills Challenge as well for their hard work and everybody for their patience. You know, it's been a, a long time making this fight, but when there's a fight the size of this, you know, coming and, and putting on a production like you guys want to put on, these things take time. So thank you to Aegis and Alex and Alexander Usyk as well. And, and of course, for our team, Anthony Joshua, 258 Management, Robert Garcia and this is all very nice. It's all very friendly, but we're only here to win. Yes. Exactly. Honestly, that's, that's all that matters. Last September was, was very painful when the great Alexander Usyk dethroned Anthony Joshua. And, and we're here to be pleasant, but we're here to see this man regain those wonderful belts up there on August the 20th. Amazing. We're, we're actually here to see the rage on the Red Sea happen and on the 20th of August as well. I'd, uh, I'd like now to hand over uh, the mic to you to have a chat with our boxers and their camps and good luck and I'll be back again. Eddie, it's all yours. Well, thank you very much and uh, thank you for all attending here today in Jeddah ahead of this huge event, the Rage on the Red Sea, August the 20th in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. It's been a long time coming. Back in 2019, we saw Anthony Joshua rematch Andy Ruiz and regain his World Heavyweight Championships in Riyadh. And it was a tremendous event. And of course, the boxing world and the sporting world slowed right down through the COVID pandemic. But now we're back long overdue and we're delighted to bring what is the biggest fight in the heavyweight division, one of the biggest fights in world boxing to the kingdom in August. We're delighted, of course, to be joined by not just Team AJ with Anthony Joshua, the former two-time heavyweight world champion, his great new trainer, Robert Garcia, but of course the champion, Alexander Usyk, the unified world heavyweight champion, the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion, his manager, Igis Klimas, his promoter, Alex Krasik as well. Abdullah, of course, we've heard lots from about the growth of boxing here in Saudi Arabia, something that's very important to us as fans of the sport. It's amazing to bring huge profile, high profile fights to the kingdom, but even better to witness the growth of boxing here in the kingdom, to see these great fighters inspire the next generation. We all know Alexander and Anthony are two great examples of what boxing can do for a young person, how it can change, how it can shape their life. And we really believe that boxing is a tremendous way to shape and mould the life of young individuals, to teach them all the things that are important in, in life, about discipline, respect, fitness, mental well-being, being part of a team, being part of a community. And we feel very strongly that boxing can do that. So Abdullah, congratulations on the tremendous growth of boxing, particularly at the grassroots level, 
in the kingdom. We're going to start by speaking to both members' teams. Um, Igis, we'll start with you, the, the champions team. We're going to be speaking back and forward. It's been a long time coming. Um, there's been a lot happening in the world. And of course, this rematch probably expected to be more like April or May. But what an event, what a setting, what an opportunity for these great fighters. And August 20th, a chance for Alexander Usyk to defend his world heavyweight titles. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having us. I wanted to thank uh, Scout uh, Skill Challenge Company, uh, Prince Khalid, Ministry of Sports, Boxing Federation for uh, having us here. I wanted to congratulate Matchroom to put uh, this deal together with uh, uh, K2 Promotions and uh, thank you very much for having us here. As far as, uh, as, far as uh, this rematch, uh, this, this bout is very, very important for both men, not just a one-sided, it's a both men. Of course, Anthony wants to get his belts back. Uh, he's with a new team, new trainer. Uh, I know personally Robert Garcia. He trained a couple of my champions before. He's a great, great trainer. So I think uh, Anthony did a good, good job picking up this trainer. Uh, for Alexander, is very important to keep those titles, to go further, uh, because very, very possibility the winner of this bout will go for the undisputed heavyweight champion, and which is going to be a history. So it's very, very important bout. Obviously, we know um, there's been lots happening around the world, of course, in Ukraine as well, and an important moment for Alex to represent Ukraine in this fight as well, a difficult period for many of you, and Alex will talk about that, but a very proud champion and, and here to defend his title with honor on August 20th. Yes, of course, this is, this is very, very important. August 20th, it's gonna be another history day for uh, in the sport of boxing. Thank you, Igis. We'll turn to Robert Garcia. Robert, one of the worst kept secrets in boxing that you were involved in, in Anthony Joshua's camp and Please, now that that news is out there, we know you've been working hard behind the scenes. It's probably the biggest fight to walk straight into, but you're here to help this man regain his world championships on August 20th, and there's a lot of confidence in this camp and plenty of excitement as well. Definitely, and th definitely. Uh, first of all, thank, thank you all for being here. Thanks for having us. I want to congratulate Usyk and his team for you know, all the success they had. They're great people, great team. But you know what? Um, I, I started coming here in December. I've been coming back and forth to, uh, to England to work with Anthony. And I see a, a different Anthony now, you know, the, the way he thinks, the way he talks, uh, everything he's practicing, everything he's doing in the gym. You know, I, I think he fought the wrong fight and, uh, and that's, that's the past, you know, that happened already. Usyk was a better man, congratulate to him. But uh, come August 20, we're gonna do whatever it takes, you know. To, to win those titles back. I know he could do it. He's got, he's the bigger man, he's the stronger man. He's got the reach advantage. So we're gonna take advantage of all that. And, uh, and come that day, I think uh, without a doubt, we're gonna, we're gonna have a three-time heavyweight champion of the world. Rematches are, are always fascinating. We saw Anthony adapt so well in the Andy Ruiz rematch for a completely different fight, boxed under instructions and won every round in that fight. We know that Alexander Usyk is a pound for pound great fighter. And you talked as well in an interview recently about the ability to adapt in a fight. The game plan might need to change during the fight and you're willing to cover all bases as you go into this difficult task to fight this pound for pound Definitely, break. we gotta be prepared for everything. You know, uh, Usyk is a great fighter. You know, he's got skills, he's got reflex, he's got, Accuracy, he's got everything, but uh, but yeah, you know, I think I think Anthony has all the other tools to beat him. You know, we just have to do the things in the gym. You know, when when I first came in December, uh, Angel Fernandez was also working with us. He uh, he told me about so many things that went wrong during the camp. You know, that's the past. You know, that already happened. Now it's time to work on what Anthony could do. You know, if you guys see Anthony in the back, he's practicing little things that, that we've been working on in the gym. You know, even on his days off, he's training. We're watching uh, sparring together. We're watching videos together. And he's learning. He's taking notes. He, he wants to be champion again. And, and, and like I told you, uh, I have no doubt that uh, August 20, he will be champion again. And finally, you work with some great fighters. How's it been 
seeing this this big heavyweight up close, the speed, the combination punches, like you say, that ability to learn as well. But always you know, fun watching this man unload leather. You know what? Uh, with his dedication that he has, all the all the hard work that he, that he does in the tra in, in the gym, you know, it motivates me also to to do much more and to and to put more more into the into the into training camp to to come out with the win because I know how much he wants it. I know how much the, the rest of the team wants it, and that motivates me to to do it also, you know, I, I, I won my first heavyweight champion of the world, you know. I've had uh, 14 world champions, he will be my 15, but he will be my first heavyweight champion of the world, and that's big, big for me too. Thank you, Robert. Alex, welcome. Um, again, part of these long negotiations to get this done, but we're here. Famous pictures of you and Alexander embracing in the ring at Tottenham Hotspur in September of last year, and us looking sick. As, as we suffered defeat, and of course Anthony, but a special moment for you, but now coming in as champion, defending that crown, and a huge event, August 20th here in Saudi Arabia. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to thank the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the opportunity, and it's a big honor for us to be here. Uh, while thinking over the speech for this uh, media event, I looked back for the press conference that we had uh, before the first fight. And the last words were, um, let the best men win, and we see you again for the rematch. So here we are, seeing you again for the rematch. <laughs> uh, it's an absolutely huge event. Uh, it's a big, huge honor to be a part of it. And um, it took us a lot of efforts and will to make it happen. Uh, in probably in uh, February and March, we had to face a challenge of war in our country, and uh, it was like we didn't have, we were not sure that this fight might take place. But finally, we put ourselves together, we made the decision uh, to get into the fight, and uh, now we are here representing our country, Ukraine, with pride in our hearts. <sighs> And we are, representing, we are representing our country here in the, uh, in the new destination of sports in the world, here in the Saudi Arabia. And to finish with, so let this fight happen. Let, again, the best men win. And probably we see you again for the undisputed, inshallah. go to the challenger this time. Incredibly, your 27th fight, your 12th successive world championship fight. Still feels like yesterday when you turned pro after winning the world, sorry, the Commonwealth, the Olympic gold in London in 2012. All those fights on, that hunger still burns deep inside of Anthony Joshua. The will to become champion again, the will to win again, back to Saudi Arabia with such great memories, of course, from when you beat Andy Ruiz here in December 2019. But please now to get this date, please to be able to focus on what is arguably the toughest fight of your career, arguably the most important moment of your career here in the kingdom in August. Yeah, for sure. I just want to say God is good all the time, even through tough times. I'd like to thank everyone for coming up today and definitely the hunger's still there. <coughs> As I always said from the get-go, stay hungry. Just keep the motivation high. Blips happen, things happen in life, but resilience, mental toughness, consistency will always prevail. So we're still on the road, still on the road to undisputed for sure. And it's just a little blip in the road, but I'm focused on the target, which is sitting over there. I'm focused on the goal and God willing, I'll perform and I'll become three-time heavyweight champion of the world. I remember when you, you suffered that defeat, when you suffered defeat to Andy Ruiz as well, you always put on a brave face, but this one was a little bit different because I felt like you knew you might have got it wrong. And I remember meeting up with you, I think a day or two days after the fight at Tottenham. You were angry, you were deflated, and it's taken you a while to, to get things right. I know you're a perfectionist now, you have a new trainer yeah, as yeah. well, but 
It's been a while, but it feels like this time has been good for you to reflect on that defeat, understand what you needed to change to move forward. And now I've never seen as much confidence within the team going into this camp. Yeah, kind of, definitely. Like with Andy Ruiz, I think a lot of people can see before the fight, things weren't 100%. But we've got to be strong, thick skinned, and we take our loss like a man, you know, because when I win, I keep it moving, I thank everybody, and if I lose, you have to stay humble as well in defeat. So we kept it moving, and I knew I could come back again and do what I have to do. Um, the fight with Usyk, he bust my ass for some rounds, <laughs> and uh, I have to take that defeat like a man as well, but I hold myself accountable, you know. I'm someone who can admit when I'm wrong and hold my head high when I'm right, and in the fight in September, uh, I was wrong. And he was right. And simply, I have to reverse that role August 20th. And I don't like to overcomplicate the situation because there's simplicity and genius. Like, sometimes if you keep things simple, you can achieve great things. So I'm just going to keep things simple, move forward. And the date will soon come, 20th of August. So I wish the team a successful training camp and uh, safe travels wherever they're going in the world. And same to my team. Robert's been great in the camp my uh, staff at the back there as well that have been helping me in training camp. I wish all of us well. I wish you guys a safe few weeks and I can't wait to see you all again in the stadium for a great night of heavyweight championship boxing. Well, one thing you've always been good at is adapting and, and learning and, and putting together a game plan and following that game plan. You did that so well in the Andy Ruiz rematch as well. Going into the Usyk fight, there's a lot of almost sort of uh, perception, confusion of the wizardry of Usyk and the unknowns of facing this guy. Now that you've gone 12 rounds with him, do you think that's gonna help you a lot going into the rematch as well? Because I felt like going into that first fight, there was a lot of unknowns about his ability, the southpaw stance, his movement. You've experienced that. You've also seen how good it is as well, but gonna help you to understand what you need to do to regain those belts. Yeah, for sure. Like, we have to give him, his team, credit where credit's due. I'm not a hater. You know, I, I respect people and their craft. I respect him and his craft and what he's achieved. So that only should motivate me to want to get better, right? So if I'm around someone that's better than me on the night or better than me in certain aspects, I have to motivate myself and push myself to be better than them. And that's all it's done, really. Um, and the great thing is, is I've got a second chance. Like, what got me into boxing in the first place? When I was a youngster, I got in a little bit of trouble now and again. And, you know, I was blessed with a second chance. And I found boxing and I took it with both hands. So if you know me and a lot of my story, you can know I'm the comeback king. Um, you can put me down, but it's difficult to keep me down. Because I always keep my spirits high. I'm very prayerful. I'm very thankful. And even through my tough times, I know that everything will make sense in the long run. So we keep on moving forward. And um, good luck to him again. As I said, I wish him well because August 20th, I really want to entertain everyone that's coming. And thank you to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as well for the second opportunity. Prince Khalid, uh, my friend Bander over there as well, and uh, Skills Challenge as well. And just. Just finally, because I think it's an important message yeah. on this platform with, with millions of people watching around the world, the importance of boxing for the younger generation and within the community, because you are probably the, the, the greatest example of that, or the, the most high profile example of that as well, who can let people know, whether it's governments, whether it's countries, about the importance and the role that boxing can play. We talk about grassroots boxing in the kingdom rising by 300% since the clash on the dunes. Just a very, very quick word on what boxing did for you and how it can shape and mould the next generation. So, for me, boxing, becoming a champion is the long-term goal. It's a long-term goal that you set yourself. Deep within your heart, you always know what you want to achieve. Deep within your heart, but you look at the obstacles and the challenges to get there. So, when I started boxing, at the time, I was not living a healthy, clean lifestyle. But it promotes, for me, um, different ways of getting fit, running, cycling, rowing, swimming. You can even play badminton to get fit, whichever way. So it promotes a healthy living. So you're doing good for yourself. So I changed my diet as well. I, I still like greasy food. I still like brownies and ice cream like everyone. 
But at the same time, too much of anything is not good for you. So I learned to control myself, control my habits. So I started eating more healthy, also start controlling the things I would listen to, the type of music I was listening to, the type of documentaries I was watching. So all about what I was intaking, the information I was intaking. So I used boxing as a vessel to help push me and promote a better lifestyle, not just to become champion. I think becoming champion is easy when your spirit's right. If your spirit's in the right place, you can achieve anything. And boxing helped get my spirit in the right place. And it's been a rough journey, of course, but as I said, you can, get, you can be put down, but don't stay down, keep on moving forward. And even through um, the pandemic, a lot of boxing gyms in England were closed in Great Britain because of the virus that was going around. But through the help of boxing, the supporters, even the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we donate a lot of money to keep gyms open because the governments don't look at boxing as like um, golf or tennis or a sport like that. But I promise you, you know, we represent ourselves properly, like we represent ourselves like gentlemen. We come to fight hard, we come to do our best, but ultimately we try and be role models. And boxing has great, great things that it can offer young aspiring children that want to help themselves in business, because if you live a healthy life, I'm sure you could be successful in business. Like I see you half of the time trying to be a boxer or trying to run around the streets and look after yourself because healthy heart, healthy circulation, good mind. And I love boxing for those reasons. Thank you, Anthony. Alexander, welcome. For the first time, first press conference, the reigning unified world heavyweight champion. You said you were going to do it, you did do it, this time here in Saudi Arabia, defending your world heavyweight titles. Добро пожаловать. Ты в прошлый раз говорил, что ты это сделаешь, ты это сделал. Сейчас ты первый раз на пресс-конференции в роли чемпиона действующего. Hello, everybody, people. I'm very uh, happy and here. I'm very happy what uh, next my fight in uh, Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Prince Khalid. Thank you so much. It's uh, very, uh, uh, pleasant. Yeah, very pleasant uh, for me, for my team. Uh, now, now I want to switch to Ukrainian. It's a big honor for me to be here. Uh, as we all know, we are in not, not in the best uh, conditions at the moment back at home, but uh, we are doing what we have to do. We are doing our job together with my team. We are working hard to achieve our goals. Uh, I never made some very loud and bright speeches. All I did is I just worked hard in my training camp, in my gym. That's what I'm going to do until the date of the fight. And then I will enter the ring and will make you happy with my boxing. Thank you. Alexander, just, just one more question, of course. You looked very happy when you won in September to become champion, but you're very confident that you will be victorious on August the 20th and you will leave Saudi Arabia as still the world heavyweight champion. The reason for my happiness is not uh, my championship belts, but uh, the fact that I have a family, my wife, my children, and a wonderful team around me.
Well, thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Igis. Thank you, Alex Krasik, Abdullah. Thank you, Robert, Anthony. And here we go, guys. August the 20th. Not long now. This will come around very, very quickly. In Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, the Unified World Heavyweight Championship. Those great belts up there, the IBF, the WBA, the IBO, and the WBO World Heavyweight Championship. The greatest prize in our sport will be contested here in the kingdom on August the 20th. We're going to have both fighters, both champion and challenger, in front of us here for a head-to-head -head before the guys take care of their media obligations. We want to thank you so much for attending here today. We will be in London on Wednesday for the London leg of the press conference, and we look forward to a wonderful event here on August 20th. Thank you, Eddie. We will call I would like to invite our boxers uh, to now gather outside for the official photo call and traditional face off, which will take place outside in front of the stunning Red Sea. Photographers and camera crew, if you'd like to make your way outside in a couple of minutes, we work to position you all for a photo moment. Thank you for attending. We look forward to welcoming you all back on August 20th, 2022, for Rage on the Red Sea. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.